Hi there once again. Now it seems a lot of you are still going to court when I've advised, uh, you know, the best thing to do is not go to court and most of that advice or there's a lot of good advice given in the um, my uh, YouTube video rebutting presumptions. So if you haven't looked through that, uh, go have a look through that because most of you are waiting until you get caught by going to court and and it's it's a lot harder when you get to court because it's quite scary so it's better to do the paperwork before you go to court and then you won't get caught out but if you have been caught out and you're going to court this is what you need to do there's always a presumption and and this is uh one of the uh keys to it we must break those presumptions that anyone has any power or jurisdiction over us. So jurisdiction is the scope of a court's power to do justice and causes brought before it. In its narrow and strict sense, the jurisdiction of a validly constituted court connotes the limits that are imposed upon its power to hear and determine issues between persons seeking to avail themselves of its process by reference to the subject matter of the issue, to the persons, now we'll come back to that in a, in, a, in a little while, to the persons between whom the issue is joined, that issue is joined, so there is a joinder there that you need to know and you need to break that presumption, and to the kind of relief sought or to any combination of these factors. So we, need, we now need to break that presumption. Here in New Zealand, we will do it, uh, we'll go to our uh, legislation site to find the answers. Now, in any country where you're watching this, the same process will apply, but you will have to go through and do that yourself. Um, I'm doing this for New Zealand, but you will find that you have the same sort of acts in your country. You just need to do a bit of digging. I'm showing you how to do it here. All right, so this is what we would do here. Okay, if you open the link uh, that I've provided there, you'll get this page come up on the screen. Now, if you click this little button here and scroll down to J, you're going to pick up the Judicature Act. So we'll hit the Browse button, scroll down here until we come to Judicature Act 1908. Now, this is a tricky little act because the Judicature Act is the act of the High Court, but then if you scroll right down to the bottom, you find the High Court rules, and this is the part that we're looking for in the High Court rules here. So Schedule 2 is the High Court rules. So we'll go into there. Now what we want to do is scroll down the High Court rules till we come to Interpretation. And if you look at this bit here, which I will take a screenshot of uh, the Interpretation, but we're looking for Address for Service and Appearance. So we'll take a screenshot of those later. Uh, and, and I'll explain those, but there's one thing more in this act that I want to show you, and that is that is at the bottom of the Judicature Act, you scroll right down to, sorry, the High Court Rules, which are hidden in the Judicature Act, if you slide right down to the bottom here, uh, we're just about there, you're going to find the forms. If you click on there, you'll find all the forms you need, and if you go through those forms, you'll find a form that will help you to get over your current predicaments. Right, so there's one other part. There is a Judicature Amendment Act 1972, which we also need to look at. And once again, if you go to the interpretation of every act, you'll find what the words mean in those particular acts. Now, in this um, Judicature Amendment Act 1972, license includes any permit, warrant, authorization, registration, certificate, approval, or similar form of authority required by law. Now, I told you we'd come back to person. Here it is. Person includes a corporation sole and also is a body of persons, whether incorporated or not. Now, if you know your maxims, maxims is the highest point of law, and the maxim inclusio unius est exclusio ulterius means the inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. So if one is included, everything else is excluded. 
So a person is not the living man that we think it is. It's a corporation soul and it's a body of persons. That fooled you, didn't it? Okay, now we'll go to the Judicature Act. This is the uh, screenshots that we've got of the interpretation. An appearance means a document that states a person's address for service. Oh, it doesn't mean that we have to turn up. It just means an address for service. But if you go down to B here, this is the part that... Um, uh, yeah, section B, an appearance for ancillary purposes under rule 5.50. That's the one that we, we're going to be having a look at. Now also, on this, land includes any estate, right, title, or interest in land. Property includes real and personal property and any estate or interest in any property, real or personal, and any debt and anything in action. It's interesting that. Now, as I told you, we're going to look at B, an appearance for ancillary purposes. Ancillary, that which is subordinate on or is subordinate to some other decision. That's from Bovier's Online Law Dictionary. Okay, so we're going to make an appearance which is what? An address. <laughs> okay, an address for service, but it's subordinate. Okay, appearance for ancillary purposes, which is the rule we're going in under. A defendant who does not oppose the plaintiff's claim, but who wishes to be heard on any subordinate matter, may, without filing a statement of offence, file and serve an appearance stating those matters. File and serve an appearance. What is an appearance? It's a, an address. All right. Here we go. This is now, uh, I told you earlier that you could go down and get the forms. This is what the form looks like. This is the form that we will be putting into the High Court. So it's in, if you start at the top left corner in the District Court of New Zealand Auckland Registry, this is how you'll head the first page up. Uh, you won't know those numbers unless they're being given to you, but under the Land Transport Act, in the matter of summons between John Henry Doe, who is the defendant, and New Zealand Police, who are the plaintiff. Appearance for ancillary purposes, dated 7th day of August, and there you'll put your uh, file by... Now you'll notice here that we're only using the first two names. We're not using the DOE, okay, and we're giving our address for service, which is 15 some street anywhere. Ancillary. That's what we told you before. We were going in for ancillary purposes. Okay. Appearance for ancillary purposes under Rule 5.50. Statement of claim. The defendant, an ancillary corporation, okay, subordinate. There we go. Subordinate corporation trust in the name of John Henry Doe. Registration number. Now, you want to put your birth certificate number there. Having no capacity to act relies on the living man, John Henry, to act as surety. The living man, John Henry's objection is based on the following grounds, that the filing serving of an appearance does not operate as a submission to the jurisdiction of the court. And are all men not equal before the law, before the natural law? Now, that is another uh, maxim that you need to know. And that the court or any corporation can compel performance. They can't. And presentia corporis tollet errorum nominis, blah, 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 blah. The presence of the body cures the, cures the error in the name. So if you turn up, the body turns up, you cure the error in the name, the John Henry Doe. The truth of the name cures an error in the description. So if you turn up to court, you're gone, unless you do what I'm showing you here. Therefore, if I, John Henry, were to appear in court to, order, to answer the information, would I not have cured the error of the name and given the court joinder and jurisdiction? So John Henry would have been jo joined with John Henry Doe, and then they have jurisdiction, which would allow the court to proceed summarily under the Summary Proceedings Act 1957 or under Section 49 of the District Court Act 1949. And it is our will that I, John Henry, do not become attached or become surety to the Crown entity, John Henry Doe, 
and that by threat of arrest by bent copper, are we not forced to do something against our will? And once again, there's um, another uh, maxim there. They're too hard for me to uh, say, so I'll just say, making all contracts null and void. Fiat justitia rio colum. Let justice be done, though the heavens should fall. We now tend to record our sincere and humble apologies, pray for forgiveness as we forgive our fellow man, offer our bond, and seek costs of $1,500 New Zealand dollars, $1,500, for inconvenience and out-of-pocket expenses in accord and satisfaction with High Court Rules 5.50. Okay, so that's how you will fill out the paperwork. Now, when you have finished your paperwork, you need to do the following. You need to staple, go to birth, deaths and marriages and get a brand new uh, birth certificate and staple it to the back of the, the paperwork. Just on the one that you're giving the court, you can put a copy on your ones. You want uh, two copies, one, one for yourself and one for the um, prosecutor. Now, endorse the back of the birth certificate. Place a five cent stamp in the bottom right hand corner on the back of the birth certificate and also the, the paperwork that I've just taken you through. Put a date stamp halfway across the stamp and paper, then sign across the stamps. Now you've paid your stamp duty and you have um, cancelled the stamp. Okay, an endorsement is a writing on the back of a document. Thus we speak of an endorsement on a deed, on a bill of exchange or on a writ. The Bill of Exchange Act, Section 2, states that endorsement means an endorsement com completed by delivery, and Section 32 outlines the requisites of a valid endorsement. Now, that comes from Butterworth's New Zealand Law Dictionary. So an endorsement is you sign the back of the birth certificate. The same as when the bank goes in, would you endorse the back of this check? It means you sign it. Okay, now you lodge the paperwork with the registrar. So you get three copies. You only leave the registrar with one of those copies. You get the document stamped as accepted. Then you request the registrar to place your paperwork in the file so that the judge receives your paperwork. Now, when you stand in front of the judge, you must ask him if he has your paperwork. Now, by putting the stamp on the back of it, he cannot turn over and look at a blank page. He must, he cannot interfere with the mail. So if if you leave a blank document, they will look at a blank document and say, I don't see how this is going to help you. All right, but be aware, the judge will now test you to see if you know your rights. And if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. So I've covered most of these in previous videos, so I'll just give you the most common one. And this is, are you going to represent yourself? Now, we never want to represent ourselves. We want to be ourselves. So if the judge asks you, are you going to represent yourself? Say, no, Your Honor, I will be myself. Now, the final part is the judge should ask you if you have anything to say. And you must. A maxim, another maxim says, for a matter to be resolved, it must be expressed. So you must say what you want. And this is what we say. Please discharge the charges and release the original order to me. Now, as I've said, it's far better if you don't go to court, but if you do have to go, this is what you're going to do. So good luck out there.